All right. Hey, y'all. Thanks for coming. Uh, so today uh, we're going to present about Open Collective and integrating it with Drupal. Uh, it's not necessarily a topic that's going to apply to everyone, but I will go over what Open Collective is and why you may want to use it and what the main features of it are. Talk about the module that I made that's uh, basically a toolbox of various uh, Drupal integrations with Open Collective. And all of this is like going towards like how I want to use it in the future, which is about Drupal camps. So I don't have a vanity slide. I forgot to forgot to put about me. So we'll just pretend that about me. Hi, I'm Jonathan Daggerhart. You can find me on all these social media links. Uh, Twitter forward slash Daggerhart, D-A-G-G-E-R-H-A-R-T. And uh, that's probably about it. I've been doing Drupal and WordPress for 16 plus years. And... Uh, own a company called Daggerheart Lab, and we do Drupal and WordPress. <laughs> I'm also a organizer of Drupal Camp Asheville, and I maintain the website. Okay, now I'll talk about the slide that's in front of us, the table of contents. So uh, we're going to talk about all of these have to do with Open Collective. What is it? Why use it? Drupal integrations, and then we'll demo some of the uh, working module that I have. So Open Collective. <laughs> so Open Collective is a website that provides fundraising and legal status and money management as a platform for communities or projects. So uh, the way they describe it is a legal and financial toolbox for grassroots groups. So in our, in our case, we deal with open source a lot and open source has a funding problem in general most of the time. So Open Collective it would be a good way for you to give your the users of your software a way to give you money back so just it's a fundraising tool and it's got a ton of features but what's as a Drupal camp what's super important about it is that uh, the feature of gaining the legal 501 C3 status meaning that you act as a nonprofit and therefore sponsors are more willing to give you money because sponsors giving money to a nonprofit lets them write it off on taxes and that's about all I know about taxes and legal status <clears throat> but it's it's a really nice platform um, and we had we as Drupal Camp Asheville we switched to it about five or six years ago due to uh, the Drupal Association's recommendation and we've we've liked it ever since so the uh, the main thing to understand about Open Collective is there's like three types of users of Open Collective there's the fiscal host which is the legal entity that, um, that manages multiple projects or collectives and allows money to pass through. So the fiscal host is, a, is anything with a bank account, any legal entity with a bank account, and the money passes through the fiscal host into collectives. And that's how a collective, which is what Drupal Camp Asheville is, has legal status because the money goes through a 501c3. And then, uh, so I'm explaining a bit of this because it's, it's not super clear. If, uh, if you just go to the website and you're like, what is this thing? There's, there's a lot going on there. But basically, you, don't, you, uh, you can be your own fiscal host, meaning you use your bank account and your legal entity. Uh, or you can make use of one of the fiscal hosts that are already on Open Collective. So we'll talk about that in a minute. And then sponsors are anyone who contributes to your collective. So in the case of a Drupal camp, that could be a, an actual sponsor of the camp. It could be an attendee who purchased a ticket, or it could just be like a donation. So uh, fiscal hosts provide legal status because the money passes through them. So these are two fiscal hosts that are a part of the open collective. I don't know what you'd call it. They're not technically the same company as opencollective.com but they were made by the same people. So in our case, uh, our fiscal host for Drupal Camp Asheville is the Open Collective Foundation, and therefore Drupal Camp Asheville has a 501c3 status. Also, if uh, you know the difference and need a 501c6 status, Open Collective has another fiscal host called Open Source Collective. All of these names start to blur together after a while, so... <laughs> Uh, forgive me if I say Open Collective instead of Open Collective Foundation, but uh, it's, it's like the same people, but they're different legal entities. 
So um, here's here's just a quick example of uh, features. So if you're using if you're using Open Collective, then you have the features to accept a lot of money. It can either be one time or it can be subscription based. So you can you can say like I guess a Patreon you could think of. You could set a level that's five dollars a month, and for five and anybody can sign up for that. Or you can do one-time purchases, such as tickets or donations. But what's really cool about Open Collective is it's designed for transparency from the ground up. So even without being logged in, you can go to opencollective.com and you can see the finances for everybody on that website. <clears throat> so this over here is a breakdown of reporting from uh, Drupal Camp Asheville. I just took a screenshot off of the um, off of the site, and we can go look at it more. But the so all the money that goes through your collective uh, is managed by Open Collective. So you manage it in, in the software itself, and it's transparent. Everybody can see it. Everybody can see where money came from and where money went to. So it's super well thought out from an open source project perspective. There is no hiding behind Open Collective. And so we should, as like open source projects, you should... This is great. We can trust. Uh, we can trust financial organizations that are that are exposing their expenditures transparently, and so I would personally feel okay donating to almost anything on Open Collective, because I can see like is this just some guy who's paying himself, or is this a real thing that has real expenses, and so I really love the transparency angle of it. So also there's a, there's really great features. So once you set yourself up with Open Collective, then you uh, then you know how do you use it? So you could just send people to your Open Collective website, and we can we'll look at Drupal Camp Ashfuls. But also they have a lot of embeddable widgets. Um, so this in the top left are examples of the embeddable buttons. They're not particularly fancy. They just sort of take you to your contribution page. But they also have the embeddable contribution flows which are iframes that are extremely configurable. Uh, and here's an example of the code down there at the bottom. If you look closely, uh, you pr probably can see that as a part of the URL for this iframe, I can choose the redirect, the amount, uh, I can pre-populate the person's email, name, I can tell it to hide things on the page. So it's a very flexible iframe contribution flow. And so what this means is you can put this on your website and people can give you money through Open Collective without leaving your website. So this is really good, and this is the feature that I leverage heavily in the uh, module portion of this uh, that we'll talk about later. There's also a ton of other features. Uh, I won't go completely into it. If we have time, I'm happy to just hop in Open Collective and show you around the Drupal Camp Asheville, whether I'm allowed to or not. But uh, but. All the things, as far as we've found so far, all the things that we would want in a money management app have been good enough on Open Collective. So we can have virtual credit cards, which are like one-time use credit cards, or we can spin up a virtual credit card and have that be pay for a subscription, like our Google Business subscriptions and things like that. And that all is just, it's all money exchanging hands outside of us. It never goes through us at all, which is great. So why use it? Well, as a Drupal camp, we use it because it is the official recommendation from the Drupal Association. Or it was in 2018 when this one particular blog post was written. So in 2018, the Drupal Association announced that they would no longer fiscally support the camps. Before this time, uh, the, the Drupal Association was the fiscal host for Drupal Camp Asheville, and therefore the Drupal Association was a 501c3, or still is, and so by them being our fiscal host, we were a 501c3 uh, camp. And sponsors do care about that quite a bit. So in 2018, they decided that they, that they weren't really prepared, they weren't like necessarily capable or good at handling every Drupal camp's finances, like taking the money, giving it back to camps and, uh, in a timely fashion, keeping things organized. So the Drupal Association just backed out of it. Um, but before doing so, they researched a lot of op, uh, alternatives. And the one they came back with is the Open Collective, uh, Open Collective platform. Specifically, 
using the Oakland Collective Foundation as, our fiscal, as the fiscal host for camps, and therefore camps can get the 501c3 status. Uh, so why use it for my use case, which is why I'm here talking a, uh, for a Drupal camp, is because it's the best practice. Aside from that, you have all the features that I've talked about and more and around transparency and stuff. So if you need the features of the system, another great excuse for why. But my why is because we were told to do that. Okay, so included in this recommendation to go with the Open Collective platform was the recommendation to use the Open Collective Foundation as the fiscal host. I think I just said that, but here's me quoting the blog post in case you don't believe it. Uh, there's a link down there. Anyway, I just needed to, uh, just wanted to explain that this didn't come from nowhere. A, a lot of people tried a lot of options, and this was the one that became the recommendation. Okay, so Open Collective and Drupal. So, um, so we have, we have a platform, we have Open Collective, and we have it being decided as the best practice. It's the recommended platform for Drupal camps by the Drupal Association. So we're, as Drupalers, we're, we're, as developers, we're missing a piece of the puzzle there. So we have a platform, we are a platform, we develop in Drupal. Uh, what we're missing is a way to actually take ownership or to integrate it with our sites and that is where this new custom mod this new module comes into play. So uh, the Drupal integration, the way I'm approaching this module right now, it's at drupal.org project open collective, is that it's just a toolbox full of different tools. Like uh, literally the main module itself consists of seven or eight sub modules. And you just pick and choose what you want uh, and how you want to integrate with open collective. <coughs> But it's not, at the moment, it's not an all-in-one solution. We'll, we'll take a look at that. I would say it's in its alpha right now. So some of the features of the integrations are all the fundraising widgets, gadgets and whatnot, buttons and banners uh, being embedded on your Drupal site easily. So if you wanted that donate button or you wanted one of their other embeddables, you could easily just uh, throw it, you could just make a block, throw that in your footer, and now people can donate to you from your website. Additionally, there's an API client that allows us to access the Open Collective data directly. And uh, I've integrated it with OpenID Connect, which we'll look at. So you can, uh, you can do Drupal authentication through Open Collective, meaning that you don't have to be responsible for proving who people are. You don't have to worry about spam or bots. That's all Open Collective's problem now. But, we'll, but Open Collective will uh, send people back to our site authenticated, and therefore it's like login with Google, but login with Open Collective. So Open Collective also has webhooks, which means that anytime something happens in your Open Collective account, uh, it will it will send a message to some URL you give it. That's what a webhook is. Is basically just hitting a URL with a payload JSON of some sort. And so the, uh, the, one of the Drupal integrations I have is receiving those webhooks and then uh, emitting both PHP and JavaScript uh, events so that you could have build your website to respond to things that happen on Open Collective. What you do with that is still up to you. It's just a toolbox at the moment, but I'll demo that. And finally, we have a commerce payment gateway made for the Drupal Commerce module, meaning that you can have products on your website and people can check out on your website but the actual payment goes through Open Collective. So now we're at a point with with that where we can almost uh, build a Drupal Camp website where people can purchase their event tickets from our Drupal site but the money is not our problem. And that's ultimately where I want to take this in the future is the next iteration of the Drupal Camp actual website will be it will use the it will use Open Collective for authentication, meaning I'm not going to worry about spam bots, but you have to have an Open Collective account to log into our site, as well as we are going to take back control over our event management, and we're going to leave Eventbrite and do everything in Drupal. 
because we're Drupalers here. So there's a few limitations and there's a bit more work to do along the way. But that's the general, uh, there's a general set of features and the plan for what to do with them. So here's just some examples of the fundraising widgets. We've actually already seen the, bu the buttons. And I'll show more of these examples once we get to the demo. But on the right is the contribution flow iframe. I showed the code for one of the iframes in an earlier slide. But in this example, uh, basically, there is an iframe that knows that I want to accept a one-time payment of $20. And that's all customizable in your iframe code. So OpenID Connect is a way that you authenticate uh, users for your website through another identity provider. And, um, and in this case, we would use Open Collective as the identity provider. And what we're seeing here in the screenshots are, on the left is just the, uh, the configuration in Open Collective. Me as an owner of a collective or as an admin of a collective, I can configure that collective to accept uh, OpenID connections or authentications. And on the right, what we're seeing is the, the stock Drupal login form but with a button that says log in with Open Collective. And I'll actually demonstrate that as well. Uh, webhooks, this is gonna make more sense at the demo. We're almost at the demo. Just had to fill in a few extra slides. So uh, everything, everything that happens in your Open Collective, we can trigger events to happen again on your Drupal site or, or different events can happen on your Drupal site. In the future, these web, this webhook data, I'm gonna integrate it with views in case you want that sort of thing. And also I want to, right now we have a, um, it's, it's emitting JavaScript events with polling, but in the future I want to make an extension that does it with WebSockets instead. And the Commerce Payment Gateway. So again, these are just sort of screenshots from a demo site. On the left is an example of an event ticket that I have set up in the Commerce Store. Uh, and on the right is part way through the checkout process of a stock Drupal Commerce site. And we can see here, uh, we're at the payment step of checkout and the payment is the actual iframe of the uh, Open Collective. This will all make more sense in the demo. But a part of this module is there's a lot of granular guidance for how to set it up as well as there's some automation for setting it up. So it's not going to do everything magical, but everything that needs to be done can be done by the click of a few buttons. Also, it syncs events and tickets to Drupal for you. So after you set it up, you don't have to go through and make a different product for every event in your uh, Open Collective or a different variation for every ticket. You can just click sync events and it'll do that for you. All right, and now we're at the demo. Before I hop into the demo, does anybody have any questions about where we are so far, what is Open Collective? Yeah. So the uh, events, is that an entity in Drupal or is it a Drupal Commerce product or what, uh, what is Yeah, that? so uh, in, in my implementation of, of this module, the event is a Commerce product. Okay. And the event in a different ticket is an event variation. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you said, um, so if you have a file one, you can be like, what did you call that? Like a fiscal host. So any 501 can be a fiscal host if they have that status, like if they buy for it. Well, anybody can be a fiscal host as long as you have a bank account. Okay. Uh, the the what you get out of the feature that you're giving people out of being a fiscal host is you're sharing your legal status with them. So you could be a fiscal host right now, but if you don't have a special legal status, then there's not really an appeal for collectives to use you as your, their fiscal host. Um, but if you were, if you had a 501c3, then that legal entity could be a fiscal host, and everything that you hosted uh, would also would also get that legal status for the sake of the exchange of money of the 501c3. Is there like paperwork involved in that? When you first? No, not very much. Okay. No, I've, I've I've got one. Uh, my, my, I've got a demo or a testing collective where I'm just my own fiscal host okay. and yeah no there's nothing um, so as the fiscal host you can also set up the different customization so like what do you get out of it well open collective foundation gets 5% of your transactions 
So as a, so there is a business model in being a fiscal host, whereas if if you have a legal status that's valuable and people want to take part in, then you can say, great, I'm happy to do that, and it'll be some percentage that you pick. Currently, is that five percent from from um, Open Collective on top of what event rate charges? Yes. So right now with Drupal Camp Asheville, since we're using Three different things. Okay, so we're using Eventbrite, which pays us through PayPal, which we send to Open Collective, and then Open Collective manages it. So we we're we're in a bad spot as far as like everybody's getting a cut of, of Drupal Camp money, um, and so this will knock PayPal and Eventbrite out of our flow to where it's just us to Open Collective, Open Collective back to us. Yeah. All right. Nope, that's not you. Nope, there we are. Demo. Okay, so let's see what we got here. I've got my little basic Drupal uh, Drupal Camp website. Oh, this is a this is a blank Drupal install, but I've gone ahead and I've set up the Open Collective uh, module suite on here. So I've got one window where I'm going to be logged in as an admin, and another window where I will test features as a user. And first things first, let's just sort of look around the admin side of things. So after configure, after installing, let's go look at the modules itself. And I'll go through what each of them offer uh, and, how, and if you do or don't want to use it. So like I said, the Open Collective module itself is actually just a bunch of other little small modules. So it has an API client, meaning you can access the Open Collective's data, raw data, directly through their API. It also adds some fields to Drupal. So if you want to add a fundraising widget to one page, or if you want to add it to the footer of every page, you just do that with site building in Drupal. You just basically add an Open Collective field to a node or a block type. Um, it integrates with a new module that I wrote called uh, the funding module, which is at more of a broader Drupal initiative to make it easier for Drupal contributors to raise money. And let's see, Open ID Connect, which we will see that is the authentication part, as well as the Open Collective webhooks and commerce, which are both marked as experimental modules at the moment. So let's go look at all the, the widgets and whatnot. So I have the funding module enabled. And as part of the funding module, you get a gallery of every type of widget that you could possibly embed on your site. And the Open Collective module adds new funding widgets. So I don't know why these are cut off like this. It's an alpha. I don't know what to tell you. But, uh, with, but I just mainly wanted to show you what type of embeddables there are coming from Open Collective. So there's this one called a banner, which should be a little bigger, should be a little taller. It includes a summary of your collective as well as some of the uh, top contributors. Very sort of generic, minorly customizable buttons that just link off to your collective. Then you have the contribution flow, which can be configured to be a one-time donation. So this is an iframe. It could be the one-time donation, it could be a subscription, it could be a checkout process for an event ticket. And these are just more iterations of the contribution flows. Oh, there's also just like images of your contributors. So for example, everybody who's ever contributed to your collective, they, uh, they will appear on your collective. Let's go take a look at that. And, and this is a way that you can actually show your community from your own site, this embedding of uh, images. So here's the Open Collective website. Um, the, the main pages are pretty good as far as describing why you might want to use it, but for me it sort of took practice to really understand why we might want to use it. Let's hop over and take a look at the Drupal Asheville. So the Drupal Asheville Collective is set up to receive these various types of one-time or recurring contributions. So just a, a donation or a job board posting. You can also do separate projects. So for example, if your collective was, um, if your collective was 
open source software that had multiple pieces of software, uh, maybe multiple Drupal modules, maybe it's like your collective is just a group of developers, then you could set those up as projects and anything that's like a separate project has its own budget, uh, has its own finances all separated out. You can also set up events where they allow you to sell event tickets. You go into events and events can have their own contributions all sort of separated out. Events can have their own budget. Uh, we're using the financial contributions for the sponsorships for the camps, as well as you can make tickets. Now we haven't made tickets yet because we were missing this glue in, in the how we're gonna use it. So how are we gonna like make this as usable as Eventbrite is for us? So one of the limitations is the uh, with Open Collective is they don't have a robust uh, attendee survey. So maybe that's not the exact way of describing it. Maybe you could say an attendee profile. So when you check out, when you bought your ticket to Drupal Camp Asheville, uh, as a part of the checkout process, it asks you what's your t-shirt size, uh, which Friday morning activity do you want to go to? Do you have any food allergies? So the ability to like really customize that ticket form, really describing the profile of the attendee, is missing from Open Collective, and they've said they're not going to implement it. I think it would just be too much work, because essentially they would have to build a perfect form builder and make it work. So, so if we want to, if we want, if we want to send our money directly to Open Collective, and we want those features that Open Collective is missing, like a robust uh, survey or profile form, then we're going to have to do that in Drupal. So. That is, this is, just wanted to show you around Open Collective a little bit. And let's see, we can go back to the main collective. We can look behind the scenes. Uh, so let me just scroll down. Remember when I said transparency out of the box? So that screenshot I took was just right here from the main page. Uh, and if you like charts, you can see them as charts. But we can go to anybody's collective and see exactly where money came from and when and where it went. So that is very cool. You can also push notifications. All right, so. Is it, so mostly open source software, but is there other kind of nonprofits or other kind of collectives? Or is it just geared towards technology? I think, I think so the question is, is, are, is there other types of projects and collectives besides open source? Yeah, there are. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you can even, let's see, somewhere up here it's like browse, and you can just look at every collective. There's a lot of open source projects on Open Collective because, because I think that was the main use case for the platform. But there are, there are also fiscal sponsors and projects on here that have nothing to do with open source. Let's see. Somewhere in here you can like literally just explore uh, the various collectives and stuff. Oh, oh, also Open Collective is open source. So uh, I have dealt with bugs on their site before that, and, and I submitted an issue ticket, checked it out, got Open Collective, their website running locally on my computer, I tried to help fix the bug, and ultimately they, did help, they helped me solve it. So that was very cool. They're really open from as ground up as you can be. So, so that, this gallery are some of the embeddable widgets. And I'm going to go down here and let's take a look at the, uh, let's see. All right, first things first, let's show an easy and good one. So I'm going to go to the list of people on this website and note there are none but me, the administrator. And now in this other screen, I'm going to, uh, I'm logged out. This is a private browser. I'm going to log in with Open Collective to my Drupal site. So I'm just going to click log in with Open Collective. And this is coming from the OpenID Connect uh, module that's a part of this custom module. So then I will uh, sign in with Open Collective. And Open Collective does magic links instead of passwords. So, okay. Now I've got to wait for an email to come through and I'll get that magic link. So kind of like Slack. Slack doesn't have passwords either, or they didn't for a while. Let's just copy that. Throw it in here. So, OpenCollective.com 
authenticated that I was who I said I was. And then after being authenticated, send me back to Drupal. Drupal said, okay, authentication complete, create the user account, log them in. So now I'm logged in to my Drupal website without using Drupal's authentication method whatsoever. It's just Open Collective is my identity provider, and now I don't have to worry. Now spam is their problem. That's what I like. That's the way I like to think about it. If I go back over here to the admin side and hit refresh, we'll see that that user was created. Uh, and so that is going to that is going to be leveraged quite a bit in my plans in the future. And we'll talk about where I'm gonna where where this needs to go next for this to be a really tight experience. But I'm really excited that that was one of the features. So now I'm logged in with Open Collective. Great. Let's see. So the other, I think, really main feature, let's just go through this and then I'll talk about the lesser main features. So I've got test events. Okay, so here's what I've got. In my, in my open collective, I have a, a collective called Daggerheart Testing where I've just made a bunch of fake stuff. I've got a, a test event and the test event has different contribution levels and different ticket levels and things like that. In Drupal, I have, I've already set this up because there wouldn't have been enough time to do it beforehand. But in Drupal, I've already, um, let's see, where are we putting that? I've already synced the events to, um, to my Drupal site. So if I go to commerce and products, we'll see that I do have test event, which is what it was called over there in Open Collective, exists as a product. If I look at the variations, we'll see that each ticket is a variation on the product. So each ticket type, each ticket price. And so when someone is visiting your website thinking about attending camp and they want the early bird or whatever ticket, they will see your product configured as you would a normal Drupal commerce site. And then add it to cart and complete and go through checkout. So there's a couple extra steps in here. And for the sake, and since we're recording, I'm not not going to type in my credit card number. Uh, okay, so here we are on Drupal, checking out through Commerce, and here is the Open Collective embedded as the payment gateway. So I've pre-populated all of this as a part of the iframe. Click through to payment. Uh, I guess I could do a bank transfer. That'd be from my bank to my bank. I wonder if they'll let me do that. Yeah. Okay. So, completed checkout. There was an extra step there that will be get, that I'll be getting rid of in the future, but uh, that's it. So now in Drupal, back to commerce and orders. Uh, we have this. We've captured this. This is some. This is real. This happened. Uh, we have it, and now we can customize around Open Collective with these integrations. So we don't need. So when Open Collective doesn't offer, now that we have these integrations and more in the future, when we have a need, we can do it in Drupal, which is what we're good at as a community, as opposed to asking Open Collective to make a new feature, which may or may not ever happen. So that that's it. So that was the Commerce Payment Gateway. That was the OpenID Connect. And in the future, what I want is, and I'm not too far from it, just have to make the time, is I want, I want way more of a a seamless experience to where here on the imaginary Drupal Camp actual website, someone can just visit the ticket or the product, add it to cart, immediately end up past all these extra steps. And here it'll say, log in with Open Collective. And I, it will not give you a chance to register because I don't want to be responsible for your identity in any way or your authentication. But Open, we will be basically running an extension of Open Collective on our web, as our website. So that is coming in the future. I want that to be super clean. And now also, since we have control of it, so we, we've got this checkout flow, as a developer, I can, I can now add, add as a part of this flow all the customizations I want. So on Open Collective, I can't ask you your t-shirt size or your dietary preferences. But here, as a part of my website, I absolutely can. I can say, actually, before you complete checkout, fill out this form. And, and now we have 
the control over the customization of the event attendee experience that otherwise wouldn't be available. And that's why these integrations for Drupal are necessary if you want to use Open Collective and not be spending a lot of money with a fit right also. So those are the those are the two big ones. There's also um, Open Collective, let's see, we've got webhooks. So like I said, uh, let's go over here to back to the collective and I'm going to look behind the scenes a little bit at the, oh, that's the event. I'm going to go to the collective. See, I'm my own fiscal host. Uh, it was no effort at all. Here we are. I'm going to look at some ad, the admin side over here. And I'm going to look at the organization settings. So here, here's where you set up webhooks as well as the OpenID. Uh, OpenID Connect, the OAuth app is what it is. So here is how I configured it. My secret, my password is hidden. But essentially for me to get that login with Open Collective, I just enabled this on my collective. And then I enabled that module and clicked a few buttons, and that's what gave us authentication. And they've also got webhooks, which where you tell Open Collective, every time something happens, hit this URL that I give you. And I've given it, uh, I've given it a URL that is for like a demo Pantheon site, which is not what I'm using as part of this presentation. But every single time any event, and here's a list of some activities, any of these types of things happen, then Open Collectives is going to call my website, and my website will receive that connection, or that webhook payload. It'll log it in Drupal as an entity, so it's, it's fieldable if we need that. Uh, views integration should come along with it. And then what this module does is it emits a PHP event and a JavaScript event so that you could have your page uh, dynamically respond while somebody is sitting on your website. You could have that page dynamically respond to things that are happening on opencollective.com. So these are a few test um, webhook events. There's not really a lot to see on this page. But if we go to the webhooks testing form that I made, so on, we, what we have is on the left, we have a way to approximate to test sending webhooks. We're just sending them to ourselves. Uh, and these are just example payloads that come from the documentation or that I've made while, while testing this stuff. And so what I, what, what's happening on this page is on the left is a way for us to send an example webhook payload. And on the right, I have a JavaScript thing uh, pulling the back end. And anytime Drupal receives a payload visit, this JavaScript uh, polling widget, I got to come up with a name for it, uh, will we'll see that and fire a JavaScript event. So on the left, I'm just going to click send webhook. And on the right, what did I do? Oh, okay. So maybe that webhook uh, needs some work. But on the right, so this is constantly polling the back end for any events that are happening. And so the page isn't refreshing. On the left, I'm just sending webhooks as if things were happening uh, on Open Collective. And on the right, this is what my front end could know about. And so could dynamically respond to the things that are happening. This is, uh, the use case for this isn't 100% clear yet, but it's super cool. Uh, that, yep, take that one with you. Let's see. What, where do you define like the action? So you receive that payload with whatever data, where do you define what you need to do with it? Yeah, okay, so that you would write, um, you would write a little custom code. So I can find examples of that. We're almost out of time, but uh, I, I'll, I'll pull something up real quick, just so that we can get a, a sense here. And let's just close my stuff. Okay, so one collective webhooks. So I think here, let's just look at the test form. So basically, 
you write JavaScript, and I don't know how to zoom in, and I apologize for that, but you would write JavaScript that that's, um, listens for a certain event to be fired. Uh, in this case, the event can either be generically open collective dot webhook event, which is just what I named it, or it can actually have the the webhooks activity name as a part of it. So open collective, in this case, here's an example of responding to specifically the event of collective update published. So, and then inside of these is where you'd write your custom code. So what do you want to happen when collective update published? You would write it inside of that code there. Yeah. So it, what, it's really a developer toolbox. What it does on its own is practically nothing but it like just brings a ton of functionality into Drupal for you to build on top of. And that's where we'll be going next, is building on top of this. So it also emits uh, PHP, let's see, did we put it there? No, uh, PHP events, so, ah, here we are. So in the controller that receives the webhook, we are we are dispatching uh, Drupal PHP events. So the webhook happens, and you can respond to it with PHP or with JavaScript. And use case for that TBD, but it's super cool. And I think that's about all I have. There's there's more little sub modules in here that provide other tiny little tools, but this is the foundation which we hope to rebuild the Drupal Camp Asheville site on top of. Any questions? Was pretty cool. Thanks. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> awesome.